final portion of this tutorial I want to show you how we can make a uh, a hidden line um, exploded axonometric and we're not actually going to move anything we're just going to do this in a clever manner using using layers and viewports so we'll need another layout to work with so if we right click layout one do move or copy move to the end create a copy OK. Go to the next layout and let's rename this. Let's call it Axon, just so we know which is which. OK, we can keep the title, that will suffice, but I'll, I'll delete the rest of the text. So I'll just take the text and we'll take that top viewport as well, That'll, that can go. We can use this viewport to do the job. So I'm going to move this out, try and make it reasonably big, and maybe a bit higher as well. Okay, then go into that, view, press escape, go into the viewport, and in this viewport only, I only need to see the 3D layers, these ones. So I can, I can go to my layers dialog, and when you're in an active viewport in paper space, you get an extra column here. So these can all be frozen off in this viewport only. So the dimensions should disappear. Annotation was in paper space anyway, that didn't matter. Um, we then want to freeze off the 2D layers. Two D, two D, two D, two D. I must have the dimensions on the annotation layer by accident. And they're on the hatching layer. So we need. Okay, so we're just left now with the three D layers. Now the the orbit command has disappeared. The navigation bar is not showing up there. So maybe just type in orbit. And I'm going to twist it round. I want the gutter at the back of the view. Okay, and I'm trying to maximize as much as I can the the size of the object. So it'll just it'll just look clearer in the viewport. So that's about as big as I can get in that viewport. Then press escape. Right, now we want to freeze off the majority of the layers in this view. Okay, and we'll just leave ourselves with the connectors. So we'll go to this, go to the layers dialog again, and it's basically freezing all the 3D layers now. So bolt, bracket, leave connect, gasket, glass, gutter, nuts, steel fins, and washers. So we're just left with the connector. Okay, double click outside, and then we can copy the viewport upwards. Now the amount of you copy it upwards really depends on the shape of the object that you're working with. Base point anywhere. Let's let's start off with say 30 30 millimeters. Okay, so we've got two viewports showing the same material. If we double click in this gap, we can then swap some of the layers over. So we'd be freezing 3D Connect, but activating 3D Steel Fin. Now can you see how it appears that the thing is an exploded axonometric? We go back to Paper Space, copy the viewport up, why not use the same distance that's there, endpoint to endpoint. We just play with the layers again. Freezing the 3D steel fin, bringing back on 3D bracket. Now they look a wee bit high up above the the fin, so we could move that viewport down a bit. It's just done by eye. You don't want them to be locked too far apart. It's going to take up too much paper. Okay, copy the viewport again. about the same probably. This next one would have the gaskets in it. 
So the bracket gets frozen off. The gasket comes back on. They're a bit further, a bit too far apart as well. So let's move that viewport down. So we're not moving, moving the objects. Nothing, nothing in the model has been disturbed. We're just looking at it in a different way. Copy the viewport again. I'm not going to bother with uh, with nuts and bolts. That would be far too much work. Let's uh, let's just go with glass next. So 3D glass will be coming on. Gasket going off. Okay, that looks about right. I wouldn't want the the blue line there to be over sitting sitting on top of the gasket. So I'll keep that as it is, and then. The final level will be the gutter with its downpipe. So 3D glass goes off, 3D gutter comes back on. We've got a bit of fresh air, a bit of space down here, so we can move all the viewports together and bring it down a bit more into the middle of the drawing. You know, there'd be room for some annotation then if you wished. Now let's have a look at a plot preview of this. If you right click and plot and preview. Now it looks pretty interesting, but everything looks like it's made out of perspex or glass. There is a piece of glass, but only one. All the rest are solid objects. So how do we make them look as if they're all uh, solid? Okay, we'll escape the pr plot preview. Cancel that. And you do this as part of the, the viewport command. So the command is MV return. And then we've got some settings down here called shade plot. So you type in the letter S and return. And we want hidden line removal here. I don't want to shade it in any fashion. Hidden line removal will suffice. So H return. And when it says select objects, it's not meaning the objects in the model, it's meaning which viewports do I want to, sh to have shaded or hidden. So I'm picking all of the viewports apart from the one before the top. So I'll go one, miss one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. Press return. That's made the setting. Now if we plot again and preview, looks more like a, a kind of a Haynes manual 3D drawing now. We've all got different colours there. We could assign uh, a standard colour to all of those. That might work better for printing. I'll exit that and cancel the plot. And in the main layers dialog, probably be easier to do this. I'll bring that into view. jump around a bit. So all the 3D layers, I may as well take the whole lot and give them a thin pen weight. Okay, so maybe just use blue for this. It will use a 0.1 pen for everything. Because nothing's got a in this view, nothing really should have a hierarchy, shouldn't and nothing should be stronger line than anything else. So let's plot preview again. There, it's looking cleaner now. We're all, all using the same, same line weight. A couple of finishing touches here. We need to edit the title. I'll just call this construction. Title's hanging off, so we need to move it across a wee bit. Okay, and then something we could do if we change the layer to be uh, 2D detail, which is a dash line layer, then how about marking on some uh, some connection kind of lines? Now this is a wee bit tricky, but if I draw a line down through the 
through that bolt hole just take it right the way through and just stop just above this one okay I can break that on either side of there so it looks as if there's a connection that goes through there bit difficult to see on this on the on the screen grab I think but if I copy that okay look for a common point you have to be careful where I pick let's go there to there I can copy that right across to the other side of the drawing I only have to draw it once and that should be in the same place at the back as well over on this side well, let's just have a look and see what that looks like on the plot preview looks quite useful you can do the same for the side connections as well if I exit that and cancel the plot preview and there should really be a connection between here and here so it's slightly trickier. If I draw a line on top of a line that's in in model space, so this the line's in paper space, but it's drawing through to model space. Okay, I'll draw a line up, and then fillet those two together. Okay, if I shorten it to make it appear like it's a bolt disappearing into the hole and then copy using a common point so this seems a useful place to pick take that up to the next hole which will be there maybe we've gone too far actually and then fill it Copy those three lines using a common point. Onto the other portions of the model. Forget whether I did top or bottom there. So let's zoom on that and let's do a plot preview. There's our connection lines implied. Okay, we could do the same for the, the bolt connections at the back here. We've got bolts coming down, bolts coming down, etc. Just a, a little bit of detail can make a big difference to the drawing. And that's the end of the uh, making up a axonometric drawing. So there's no damage at all to model space. Everything's the way it was. We look at the model yet in paper space we've got it appearing to be a broken up axonometric